Out of the past, phantoms of a world gone by speak again the immortal tale, The Evil Eye. Now, please read the last line, Mr. Despermont. A. Is that Z? Go right ahead. Z. Uh, T. No, I can't see the rest, Doctor. Very well. Now lean back while I have a look. <coughs> well, what is it? Did that hurt your eyes? <sighs> you flash that little light into my eyes. I had a terrible pain in the back of my head. Oh. Well, then put your head way back. I can probably see with the overhead light. There. Now, let's see. Well, why do you suppose that light hurt them so? I'm afraid, Mr. Despermont, that your eyes are very much weakened. Strong light of any sort will probably... Probably, I... I... Oh, I... I'm afraid I'll have to stop for a moment. Well, what's the matter, Doctor? You're suddenly so pale. Are you ill? Why, I... I don't know. I'll... All at once I felt so weak, as though perhaps my heart had almost stopped. Here, let me sit down for a moment. Well, I'll get you a glass of water. Here. Here, Doctor, take a drink of this. There. That's a bit better. Just let me sit here a minute. Maybe it was from leaning over so far to look into my eyes. Why, no, I... I wasn't leaning too far. I just observed the odd color of the iris of your eye, Mr. Despermont. A color usually associated with... Well, that doesn't matter. But all at once it seemed to me that the light caught a reflection in your eye, and as I saw that, I... I felt terribly weak. Almost, almost as though I'd been heavily drugged. Are you feeling any better now, Doctor? Uh, yes. Yes, thank you, somewhat. I'll give you my report, and then I believe I shall go home for tea. I shall have to cancel my next appointment. Well, I hope the report isn't too bad. You see, I'm leaving London in a few days, and I'd hate to have to miss the trip. Well, sir, as I said, your eyes are greatly weakened. I should definitely advise your keeping out of strong light, especially bright sunlight. I'm afraid that if you don't, you will greatly endanger your vision. You mean I... I may go blind? I'm sorry to have to tell you this, sir, but I must be frank. You will almost certainly be blind within time unless... Well, without surgery, those nerves cannot be saved. But, Doctor, I've got to go to Naples. Everything's arranged, and I, I, I can't change things. For what reason, Mr. Desmond? One that may sound a bit super romantic, I'm afraid. You see, my fiancée, Miss Ward, has gone there with her uncle, and I'm going to join them for a short while. Well, there's no hindering youth in love, sir. I may as well give up that thought now. I'll tell you, though, I should advise treatment immediately upon your return. And meantime, against the brilliance of the Italian sun, I should advise covering your eyes with smoked glasses. Under no circumstances, look directly into brilliant light. You think it'll be safe to go, then, Doctor? Well, tell me, why can't Miss Ward return to London? Well, surely if you explain... I, I should hate to worry her over so trivial a matter, Doctor. Trivial? I assure you, Mr. Despermont, this is no trivial matter. It means your sight, the power to see. Well, under those circumstances, I should send for her, I suppose. But, you see, she went there for her own health, and as long as I can protect my eyes until I return, I feel that my visit to her would be safer. Has she been very ill? Uh, look at me, Mr. Despermont, while we talk. Keep your eyes from that strong overhead light. Well, for some time before her departure, she was subject to sudden fits of faintness. Her color had gone, and she was very weak when she left London. Those faint spells were... were very strange, Doctor. In fact, they seemed to come upon her just as yours did. Often when we were very close, looking into each other's eyes. Well, then, sir, in that case, I should... I should have... That, that flash of light in your eyes. Uh... Doctor! Doctor, what is it? Well, can't you hear me, Doctor? What's the matter? It's all right, Monsieur. They said we may go ashore now. Oh, good, good, Rudolph. I'm certainly ready. This trip to Naples has been rather tiresome. Monsieur is anxious to reach his destination and Miss Ward? Monsieur is very anxious for that. Let's get started. Yes, sir. So there I was. I hope my gun... I've already attended to the luggage, Monsieur Paul. It's on the dock. Was there anyone there? But yes, Monsieur, there was. Well? Well, quickly, Rudolph, tell me, was it Miss Ward? Miss Ward? 
No, monsieur. But it's a very... Yes, a very charming lady. Tell me, Rudolph, who is it? Miss Ward's personal maid, monsieur, whom she'll send to greet you, and... Her maid? No one else? Oh, just the carriage driver, monsieur. Miss Ward has sent a carriage with a message that you're to come to their house at the beach as quickly as it is convenient. The maid, Louisa, will help you. Oh, was there no other message? Perhaps Louisa has one for you, monsieur. Oh, there she is, there. Oh, is she not lovely? <laughs> It'd be fine, wouldn't it, Rudolph, if you were to take the maid and hire the mistress? <laughs> yes, monsieur. Louisa! Here! Here! Ah, senor, it is to me a pleasure to welcome you. Senor! Well, what, what is it, Louisa? Something wrong? Senor, it is... I will call the carriage. Now, wait! Wait, Louisa! See, si, senor? Well, what is it? What's wrong? Well, what on earth have you got there in your hand? It is nothing, senor. A tiny pair of horns which I wear on this chain around my neck. Horns? For what for? You're holding them pointed at me so oddly. They are for my protection, senor. That is all. I must call the carriage. What do you make of that, Rudolph? I cannot say, monsieur. Oh, well, you get the baggage to the hotel, and I'll meet you there later after I visit Miss Ward and her uncle. Yes, monsieur. Louisa! Your master, you have worked for him for long? Eight years. You know what these are? These horns I carry? Yes, I know. I am Italian by birth. But I do not believe. You will believe. And before long. Your master, Signor Paul. He is very evil, that one. I get the Tore. Oh, Paul, it's so wonderful to see you again. Oh, Alicia, my darling. Oh, it's been so long. I'm sorry you couldn't have come sooner. It's wonderful here. It is a beautiful spot. And you, my darling, are more lovely than ever. Come with me out to the terrace. I fixed it up for tea. The Commodore and a friend of ours are there now. Did you enjoy the trip here? No, it was quite tiresome. But anything would be tiresome away from you, Alicia. Poor, my dearest. But come on, the others are waiting. Oh, Paul, my lad, welcome. Thank you, thank you, Commodore. Delighted to be here. And we're delighted to have you. Though I must say, Alicia doesn't look the worse for having missed you. Oh, Uncle, I've spoken of him constantly. You know that. Well, he's right, though. He's right, though, Alicia. You do look very well. Much better than when you left London. I look well because you've arrived at last, Paul. Oh, but we're forgetting our manners. Paul, may I present Count Altavilla, our friend? A pleasure, Signor. Sir, Alicia has written of you in her letters. I'm delighted at meeting you. Well, now that you're here, Paul, you'll have to look to your laurels. Count Altavilla would like to be your rival. I shall do my best to prevent that, sir. I'm sure the Count would be a far more charming friend than enemy. Mm -hmm. I think, gentlemen, that this is something of a question for me to decide, isn't it? Why, Senor, what is that you have in your hand? This? Why, my dear, it's a little ornament I always carry on a chain around my neck. Let me see. Why, it's a tiny pair of horns. A pair of horns? Have you seen them before, Paul? Yes. Yes, I have. I am not surprised, sir. Well, what on earth are they for? They serve a very real purpose, my dear. We were speaking of your health, Alicia. You have improved greatly since coming here to Naples. Mm, my faint spells have stopped. I'm sure it's the sunshine. You've had none of the spells since you left London? She's been as bright and healthy as a flower, Paul, and just as beautiful. <laughs> With that, I agree, Commodore. Extremely beautiful. Mm, I can see that this is my afternoon to shine. Oh, but I do love to sit here in the warm, sunny air in the afternoon, though. It's been good for me. Well, the sun is coming around this way now, and you'll see how delightful it is. Will it be directly on us? In a few minutes, yes. Well, why, Paul? Well, don't say, Paul, that you're afraid of a little sunlight. Well, it's just that... Well, you see, my eyes need protection. That's why I wear these smoked glasses occasionally. Yes. Your eyes do need protection, senor. Oh, could you tell, sir? A uh, great deal, senor. If you men will insist upon talking in riddles, I shall have to separate you. Come on, Paul, let's walk in the garden. There's shade there, and you can take those foolish glasses off again. I'd love to, Alicia. You'll pardon us, gentlemen? Oh, of course, of course, my lad. Uh, perhaps, senor, it would be better if you kept the glasses on, even while you're in the garden. Well, if you think so, sir, perhaps it would be best. What on earth were you two talking about that way? I can't understand a thing. Well, isn't the Count and I, Doctor? Heavens, no, I... I don't believe he's anything but a wealthy man. Come on, Paul, take them off. It's shady here. I will, my darling. I can see your lovely face more clearly without them. Paul, 
Did you notice that the Count put away those funny little horns after you put your glasses on? No. I can't understand it. He, he's been so strange this afternoon. First he spoke in a peculiar way about my health and... And then about your eyes. Maybe he's jealous, darling. Driven out of his mind with jealousy. Oh, Paul. A man might well be about a beautiful girl like you. Especially when that beautiful girl watches another man with such concentration. Oh, Paul, did I do that? I loved every minute of your watching me. We've been apart so long, Paul. I want to devour you with my eyes. Oh, Alicia, my darling. My only love, let me hold you here. Stay still here in my arms and let me... Let me look at you. Let me look into those beautiful eyes of yours. Paul. Paul. Paul, what's happening? What's the matter? I... Alicia. I... Alicia, speak to me. Paul, I... I feel so faint, so funny. Just, just the way I used to feel before I left London. Well, here, here, darling, sit down here on this little bench. Rest yourself for a moment. Oh. There, I'm beginning to feel better now. A little stronger, I... I can't imagine what it was. I felt drugged somehow, as though I was losing all my strength. I could see the light flashing in your eyes. Let's go back to the house. This worries me. Maybe, maybe a little rest. Yes, rest may be what I need, Paul. I've been waiting for you for so long, and now that you're here, perhaps my nerves are in need of rest. Come on, dearest. Look up there on the terrace. The Count is gone, I guess. Yes, yes, the Commodore's standing there alone. He seems to be waiting for us. He seems puzzled about something. Why, Uncle, what's the matter? So, you're back already, eh? What is it? You look pale, Alicia. Has something happened? Oh, it was nothing serious. I'm better now. I had one of my faint spells, that's all. It worried me, sir. And, well, it might. Alicia hasn't had one of those for a long time. What's that in your hand, Uncle? Count Altavilla left a present for you, my dear. A present for me? Well, why didn't he give it to me himself? Uh, he said you might need it. He hadn't thought of it while you were here. Let me see, Uncle. Give it to me. Why, what on earth? What is it? A tiny pair of horns. Paul, what can this mean? Monsieur. No, thank you, Rudolph. That was a delicious dinner they set up. It is an excellent hotel, monsieur. Tell me, Rudolph, you talked to Louisa the other day after I'd left. Yes. Did she explain her attitude toward me? She seemed so frightened. No, monsieur. She was not frightened. It was... Well, it was just... The... Oh, come, come, Rudolph. I could see that there was something wrong, and later, Count Altavilla held a pair of these horns toward me, just as Louisa had. Monsieur, if you insist on knowing... It's a silly superstition they have here. Superstition? What kind? It's about the evil eye. They believe that some people, people with eyes the color of yours, monsieur, possess a terrible power, the power to kill with a glance. The ignorant Louisa believed it of you. Perhaps not so ignorant. But, monsieur, you do not believe it. You remember, Rudolph, I told you about the doctor's fainting after examining my eyes? Yes, monsieur. The same thing happened with Alicia. The first time she's fainted since she came here, since she saw me last. Now, there could be a connection. Tell me, Rudolph, you were born in this country. Have you ever seen this, this evil eye in action? I have seen several accused of having it. A man so afflicted is called a yetatore. I have even seen the ignorant people hound him to death. Of course, you, monsieur, a foreigner, a gentleman, they would not dare. And the horns... What are they? Horns, monsieur? Oh, you have seen those, too. Twice. They are supposed to be able to ward off the evil of the glance of a yetatore. Then even the Count Altavilla believes in this. Even so educated a man as he, monsieur. I will answer, monsieur. Monsieur Destremont, if you please. Who is calling, monsieur? Count Altavilla, come in, come in. Oh, thank you, senor. I trust I am not intruding. Well, not at all. Be seated, senor. It's a pleasure to see you. Uh, perhaps it will be less of a pleasure when I've explained my visit. 
Was that so, senor? I see you've not forgotten to replace the horns. By no means. I trust them with my life. And so must Miss Ward until I have your promise to stay away from her. Stay away from her? I can't do that, senor. I've come to ask you that very thing. But she's my fiancée. You have no right to ask such a thing. It is for her sake. You can do a great harm. I can take steps, senor, to prevent that harm. No, senor, that will not do. You must refuse to see her again. And leave the field clear for you? Precisely. I shall marry Miss Ward. She will be safe that way. And, senor, what will Miss Ward have to say about this? I've already told her and her uncle about the evil power you possess. I warned them. And what was Miss Ward's answer? Unfortunately, she was stubborn, senor. She will not believe in this power. She believes herself to be ill of some other cause and wishes to marry you. But that, of course, is immaterial. Immaterial, senor? Immaterial that the girl I love, the most wonderful girl in the world, would prefer to chance death with me than marry another? How, how can you dare to come here to me in my own rooms and suggest such things? How dare you? How dare you? Fair, senor. Perhaps you... Perhaps you will want satisfaction for that. Very well, senor. If you prefer it that way, I accept your challenge. Monsieur! Monsieur, you're not thinking of dueling. Not in these days. It's been forbidden. Please, monsieur, reconsider. I cannot reconsider now. The thing is done. Don't fear, senor. I know the place for this. There is a cave on the seashore. No one will be near. As for the weapons, senor, I have a suggestion. I will give you the privilege of selecting the weapons. Since you believe in the power of my eyes, that even with a glance I might kill you, I suggest we duel with swords blindfolded. Blindfolded? And that way, senor... If one of us wishes to run away, he will also not be able to find the cave's mouth. It is a fair suggestion, senor. It is settled then. Tomorrow morning at sunrise. The cave is near to Miss Ward's house. Your servant will stand guard outside. There will be no danger of discovery, senor, for the tide washes into the cave and leaves it bare of clues. Oh, monsieur. Monsieur. What have you done? This is it, monsieur. The cave. Very well, Rudolph. And there is Count Altavilla coming up the beach. Oh, monsieur, I beg you, stop now. Don't go on with this. No, Rudolph, it's settled now. I must go on. Senor, is everything prepared? I'm quite ready. Very well, then. Look in here. You see, there is sufficient room for us. Enough for our purpose, senor. All right, Rudolph, you may blindfold us now. Find my eyes first, so the Count will see that it's done fairly. Monsieur, I... Come, 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 Rudolph, it's getting late. Very well, monsieur. There. Tell me if I tie it too tightly. No. Well, that's fine. Tie on Count Altavilla's blindfold now and lead us into the cave. Yes, monsieur. And you, sir, am I tying it too tightly? It fits very well as it is. And now, this way, monsieur. This way. Stand guard outside, Rudolph. Be sure to keep careful watch. Yes, monsieur. And now, senor. Ready, senor. We begin. <coughs> no! Oh, I almost fell. Silence, senor. Your voice gives your position away. Yes, so it does, senor. <coughs> Senor, contact Avila. Oh, let me see. Let me get this blindfold off. <clears throat> He's dead. Monsieur! Monsieur! Oh, it is you. Thank heaven, it is you. Yes, Rudolph, it's I. The tide will come later and claim Count Altavilla. At least no one can say it wasn't a fair fight. Oh, no, monsieur. Here, I will get your coat. The sun is rising now, but you're chilled. Yes, yes, the sun is rising. 
rising on another day. Look, Rudolph, how red and brilliant it is. Oh, Rudolph. <clears throat> Rudolph, my eyes, my head. Mr. Ford, <clears throat> what is it? Rudolph, where are you, Ike? I can't see you. Everything is dim and dark. Well, I'm here, monsieur. Right here. Can't you see me yet? Oh, yes. Yes, Rudolph. Now that you're closer, I can see you. But, but not too well. Oh, Rudolph. This is a great day for me. Monsieur, your eyes. They are red. Do they hurt you? Can't you see? I can still see, Rudolph. I can still see, but not for long. Rudolph, I'll soon be blind. But, monsieur, you sound happy. Happy to be blind. I forgot. I looked at the sun when it was rising. It was brilliant and red. And now, now I'll be blind. Why didn't I think of it before? Of what? Blindness, Rudolph. Blindness. If I'm blind, my eyes can hurt no one. It was so simple. And now, now, by chance, by the goodness of heaven, I'll be blind. Alicia and I will be safe together after all. Monsieur, have you gone mad? Oh, far from it, Rudolph. A lucky accident has brought me happiness. Alicia. Alicia. Rudolph, go back and wait for me at the hotel. I'm going to her now. I must see her again, just once again, before I can see her no longer. Alicia, my darling. Paul, why are you here so early in the morning? Alicia, I had to come. I had to tell you that, that everything's all right now. What's all right, my dearest? It always has been, hasn't it? I knew you'd be awake, Alicia, when I came and called under your window. And there couldn't have been anything better to wake up to than the sound of your voice calling me. It's wonderful here in your garden, in the early sunlight, isn't it? Any place is wonderful with you, my darling. Everything is so brilliant and sparkling. But, Paul, you've forgotten your eyes, you said you had to protect them. Well, that doesn't matter any longer, my love. That's over. What's over? Oh, Paul, why does everyone act so strange? First, it's Count Aldevila with some weird idea about your eyes, and, and now you act so mysteriously. It's nothing to worry about, my darling. Everything's fine now. Paul, please tell me what it is. Oh, my darling, come here. Come into my arms. Here, let me look deep into your eyes. Let me see you as you are, and let me look well. I want to fix your picture in my mind so I'll remember it always, always, my love, just as you are now. You'll never change for me. Paul. Paul, you're looking at me as though you'll never see me again. What is it? Never see you again. Well, I'll, I'll always see you just, just like this. Oh, Paul, you... I... I feel so faint. So awful. As though I were going to... Oh, help me. Don't let me fall. Alicia. Oh, I've looked too long. Alicia, I'll rest you here on this bench. I'll get you water. I'll, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. I'll... Oh, my eyes. It's all so dark I can't see. Alicia, say something, Alicia, so I can find my way. Say something. Alicia. Alicia. Oh. Oh, my lad, is something wrong? What is it? I can't find her. Alicia, she, she's gone. Gone? Why, lad, she's right there, lying on that bench. Your eyes, Paul. Your eyes, what's happened? They're red and bloodshot. Can't you see, lad? Can't you see? I'm blind now. I'm blind. I can't harm Alicia anymore. I love her. I'll always love her. I can't see her anymore. Oh, Lord. What is this? Alicia. Alicia, wake up, child. Wake up. It's your uncle. Won't she speak anymore? Won't she answer? Alicia! Paul! Paul, come here! What's happened? Alicia's dead. They did it. My eyes! With that last light, they did it. How can I stay here? How can I stand this place any longer? Paul, where are you going? To the house! I'm going home back to town away, anywhere away from no, here. that way! The house is over here! Going away, going home, where people won't think and won't know. Be careful, Paul! It's this! Stand this way, Paul. I'll always be with a picture of Alicia in my mind. I'll always. Paul! 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 Paul, he hear me above the surf. He couldn't see the cliff. He fell. Oh, Alicia. Alicia, my child.
From the time-worn pages of the past, we have brought you the story, The Evil Eye. Bellkeeper, toll the bell.